Hi everybody, this is Ian Lamont from In 30 Minutes Guides. Today we'll be talking about creating a fillable PDF from an existing PDF using Adobe Acrobat Pro. If this video helps, please take a moment to follow the channel and like the video and let's get started. So I have a PDF, it's a fillable PDF. And when I say fillable, it means that I can type into it. So I can type my name here, then I can uh, hit the tab button to go to the next line. So let's say I'm interviewing John Smith. I can put in the date, so March 22nd, 2022. I can, I, and I can keep on going through and adding information. And then once I'm done, I can save it, I can print it, I can uh, use it as an attachment to send to somebody else. And this is how you create a form like this from a PDF that's not fillable. And let me show you what I mean. I have the original version of this PDF. I'm going to open it in another program. And you can see that this is not fillable. I'm clicking around. There's no fields or anything like that. So I want to take this PDF and create form fields on each one of these lines using Adobe Acrobat Pro. And by the way, this works on a Mac or a Windows machine. I've tested it in both. I have Adobe Acrobat Pro in both. So let's get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of the original PDF. I'm doing that in uh, Mac Preview, but you can also do it in Windows Explorer. And so I'm going to say new fillable PDF. Okay. Then I'm going to open it up in Adobe Acrobat Pro. This is not the free home version that everybody has to read PDFs. This is actually a software program you can use to create all kinds of uh, neat things in a PDF, including fillable forms, and also edit the PDF, which is another useful thing I've shown in another video. So I've opened this up in Adobe Acrobat Pro. This is the same in Windows or Mac. It'll look exactly the same. Let me just make that a little bit bigger. And what you want to do is you want to see this kind of this uh, tool set on the side. If you don't see it, go to View and then Show Hide um, Tools Pane. That's what it is. Okay, and then. Don't select the one that says fill and sign. Select the one that says prepare form. I'm not going to be using signatures. So, and, and actually, if you do choose signatures, that opens up a, a huge uh, ball of wax, so to speak. So let's not go there. This is just a basic fillable PDF form. Click start. And uh, let's get going. So I said, so you can see already some tools have opened up here. What you need to do first is go to the top row here and select the one that says add a text field. And once you do that, you can see as I move my mouse around, this kind of floating text field appears. If you press your mouse once, the uh, a box will appear and you can see it says text 22. And then I can just keep on going through and doing that. And each click of the mouse will create a new field, which is actually pretty convenient. Uh, one other thing, though, that you should keep in mind is that, of course, I want these fields to go all the way to the right side of the page. So I'm just going to move up to the top here and I click this arrow thing. This is the selector tool. And then if you click on the left side ruler and then kind of drag out, you can see that blue line that appears? That's called a guide. And the great thing about these guides is that Adobe Acrobat and a lot of other Adobe programs, when you stretch stuff out, it kind of snaps to them. So they're all at the same point. So I'm going to stretch that one out, do the same for that, do the same for that. Okay. Uh, I can also keep on going and add some more fields. So I'm going to select the text field creator again, and it appears. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down on the with my mouse button and then drag to the right. And then drag it out to that guide. And do the same thing down here. By the way, if you have a double line answer where the they're not lined up like this, you actually have to create two separate text boxes to handle that. And I'm going to show you something with one of those one of the examples below, which is a common situation. Okay, so I'm going down, dragging it out, and it's actually, you can see, it's, it's pretty basic to do this as long as the form is simple, and this is a simple form. I'm going to just drag this down a little bit so we can see. I'm going to continue, okay, making it going further. 
One other thing I'd like to draw your attention to, on the right side of the page over here, you can see that all these numbers are appearing. And actually those numbers are important because it determines the tab order of your fields. And when I say tab order, it means when you press the tab button on your keyboard, it will automatically advance to the next field. And uh, that's important when people are filling out information and they want to kind of quickly move around the document. Okay, I'm almost done. Now I deliberately made a few mistakes here, which I'm going to show you how to correct because that's pretty important for creating a good looking form. And by the way, this is for another company that I have which creates uh, genealogy forms for people who are genealogists. Okay. Oh, still a few more other notes. So I'm going to just do that this one again. And then for this one, I'm going to just do the second line but not the third line and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay. So I'm going to press the selector arrow again so I get out of the uh, the form creation, sorry, the field creation tool. And let's take a look. So one thing you'll notice, if I click on something here, I clicked on text 23, it's highlighted here. The other thing that's worth noting is that you can actually change the names of the field. So like I might, I might change the name of text 22. Whoops. Click on it here. I'm going to change the name to your name. And then text 23, I could do um, interviewee and so on. I'm not going to do it for all of them, but I just did it for those two. Uh, the other thing that's important to notice is that I, you can see that I missed a field, um, I missed a field here, so I'm just going to add one quickly. But notice when I do that, it appears at the bottom of the, it appears at the very bottom of that particular um, list, and you can see right now that this is text 28, and then it goes to text 42. If I was opening up this this uh, fillable PDF in Acrobat Reader or another program and I hit tab, actually it would jump from this field, text 28, to text 29. It, because And the reason why is because text 42, this one, is at the very bottom of the list. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, actually going to drag that one up to text to right after text 28 and move it there. So you can see it goes text 28, text 42. That means the tabbing, the tabbing order will look okay. All right, there's a couple other things that I want to do here. Um, one of them is, you can see here, uh, text 41, I forgot to put in a field here. A very easy way to take care of that is just to select it and then copy. So if you're using Windows, that's Control-C. If you're using Mac, it's Command-C. And then paste. So Windows would be Control-V, Mac would be uh, Command-V. Or you can just go up here, Edit, and then Paste. So you can see the field just this field just appeared. So I'm just going to drag that down and put it right there. Okay. Uh, one other thing before we test this particular form, um, you'll notice that some of these forms I was kind of manually drawing them, and other forms maybe I was a little bit sloppy in the, in terms of the layout, especially the alignment to the right. Uh, you can kind of zoom in and try to microscopically adjust the sizes here by selecting them and moving them around, but there's a much easier way to do it. Adobe actually has a very good tool for that. And it's these tools up here, the Align, Center, Match, Size, and Distribute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these fields just by uh, clicking, dragging down, and holding the mouse button all the way to the bottom, and then letting go. And you can see all of them are selected. And then you can see it says Match Size. So I'm this little button here means match height. So if I click that, that means all of the heights for these fields over here will be equalized to the same height. So I'm just going to click that, and um, those are now all the same height. I can also click the align button, align right or align left. Actually, let's see what happens when I click align left. They're all going to they're all going to slide over to the left, which doesn't which looks wrong. So I'm going to undo that. Instead, I'm going to select align right. Okay, so now the, all of those are lined up. By the way, this guide will not appear when you're printing out or testing it. Okay, and uh, I think that looks okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to preview it and see what happens. So your name, just put some dummy text in there. Full name, 
person being interviewed, blah, blah, blah. I'm hitting tab and going from field to field. And you can see it, it's working. That's good. Okay. But there's a, one other problem. If I wanted to change the font size for these, there's one other thing to do. So let's go back to editing. So what I'm going to do is, let's say I just wanted to, to have like your name, that be a bigger font than all the ones below it. So right right now they're all the same size. So I'm going to I'm going to right click over your name, select properties. And you can see on appearance, it already has 12 point Helvetica. So if I want to, I can change that to 14 point Helvetica. Maybe I can actually change it to another font like courier. This is just for the sake of showing off. Okay, let's go to preview, take a look again. And you can see it's courier, it's a little bit bigger whereas this one is Helvetica. Uh, slightly smaller, although it's hard to see the difference because I think 14-point Courier and 12-point Helvetica, it's about the same size. Anyways, once you are done with that, what you want to do is you want to save a copy of this. I suggest actually doing tests by creating new copies of the PDF and testing them out in different situations. Sometimes you may find things that are a little bit off, like I can see there's a little gap here between this blue field and the black line below it. The other thing to keep in mind is that when you actually print these PDFs out with text in them, don't worry, it will not have the, um, the blue background on it. And that's basically how you create a fillable form PDF. And one other thing I recommend doing uh, for the people who are opening up the PDF, I strongly recommend using Adobe Acrobat. It's kind of like the gold standard for fillable PDFs. Some other programs will open them up, including, I believe, Microsoft Word and Mac Preview. But sometimes the way that the text where it appears and some other settings may not be quite right. It'll look, it'll look a little bit off and I've had customers who've actually complained about that. So now I always tell my customers whenever you're using one of these fillable PDFs, please open it in Adobe Acrobat. It's a free program, the, uh, the basic version of Adobe Acrobat. It used to be called Adobe Acrobat Reader or Adobe Reader, uh, but that's what they should be using when they're typing into a fillable PDF. Uh, this is Ian Lamont from In 30 Minutes Guides. If this video helped, please take a moment to like it and follow me on YouTube. I have lots more videos about Adobe and Google Drive, Microsoft Word, all kinds of stuff. And I like helping out people. And thank you so much for watching.